my brothers and sisters, this is the final day of the Feast of Tabernacle. And the Lord said this morning to talk to you about the so-called blessing, the Feast of Tabernacle blessing. Before I get into it, we are going to light up a candle. Hallelujah. Sound the shofar and ring the bell. So we may advance before the throne of God. We are going to ask God to bless this message. To bless the subscribers and those who will subscribe. To bless those who will share his message. And to give the Holy Spirit to those who will leave comment to bless the, uh, uh, the people who will watch the video. Without delay, we are going to the scripture. And the Lord said, you are going to read for them Psalm 91. And let's go straight to the scripture in right now. Psalm 91. The reason why he said for me to read for you Psalm 91, because the word tabernacle means shelter. A man and a man, the house of the Lord, the temple of the Lord. And <clears throat> when we start reading Psalm 91, the Lord said, you will see all the blessings of Sokot in there. Let's start with verse 1. Whoever dwells in the shelter of the Most High will rest in the shadow of the Almighty. So, if you take advantage of the Feast of Tabernacle, and you allow yourself to be in the shelter of the Most High, guess what? In the month of Sabbath, the month of rest, the month of Etanim, the seventh month, guess what? You will find your rest in the shadow of the Most High. Amen and amen. Verse 2. So when you enter there, Guess what? You must say something. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. Hopefully, during your prayers, in the seven days, you say to God, God, you are my refuge. God, you are my fortress. God, I trust you with my life. And let's listen to the promises and the blessings of God. Amen and amen. Verse 3. Surely he, God, will save you from the forest snare and the deadly pestilence. You don't have to worry about the sickness, the disease, whatever it is that is out there, the Lord will save you from the faller. Hallelujah. The snare of the devil and whatever diseases that are out there. Verse 4. He will cover you. So if you are smart, Start putting things down. Because I obey a, a, a Sokot. I obey the Feast of Tabernacle. God will be my refuge. God will be my a, a, a fortress. God will protect me from the fallen snare. From the devil's snare. And God will protect me from diseases. You must put that down. 
he will cover you with his feathers. Hallelujah. And under his wings, you will find refuge. That's mean that refuge, you will find it indeed. His faithfulness will be your shield and your part. That means God is so faithful, you don't have to doubt that. Because God will make sure that you are protected. It's like an insurance policy that you have every year. You renew it by, by enjoying, by meeting God during the Feast of Tabernacle. Amen and amen. You have coverage. Hallelujah. For the full year until you meet him again. Amen and amen. Do like David said, God leave me a blessing before you depart. Amen and amen. Because this is the closing assembly. This is the sacred assembly. And oh, hallelujah. For those who have not seen during these seven days, who have repented on September the 25th, on the 10th day of Etanim, guess what? You know, you can put a demon on God. You will not fear the terror of night, nor the arrow that flies by day. You don't have to worry when you go out that something will strike you. You don't have to worry about that. You will have no fear. Practically, you, are, you will have no fear. You will not fear the terror of the night, nor the arrow that flies by day. Nor the pestilence that stalks in the darkness. You enter a dark room. You don't care if there is whatever in there. You don't have to worry. Nor the plague that destroys at midday. And guess what? I, I like verse 7. A thousand will fall at your side. And ten thousand at your right hand. That means you will see people die left and right, but it will not come near you. A lot of people, they, they have testimonial and said, my neighbor died with uh, that COVID. Oh, you know, my friend died with that COVID. Even people in my family die, but now I'm still alive. Amen and amen. And guess what? A verse 8 said something extraordinary. You will only observe with your eyes and see the punishment of the wicked amen and amen you will observe god will allow you to be a witness and see the punishment of the wicked hallelujah if you say if you say you have things to say today to the lord in this final holy day of so called of the feast of tabernacle you, i want you to go and to do that exercise today lord you are my refuge repeat that lord you are my refuge lord you you are my dwelling please if you make the most high your dwelling that means every day you see the important to have tabernacle with god although we have a time a fixed time to do that but the lord said you know make sure amen and amen you make the lord your dwelling amen verse 10 no harm will overtake you no disaster will come near your tent that means no disaster will come near your house you will not be harm said the lord that means protection. My brothers, my sisters, you shall be protected. Verse 11. For he will command. Amen and amen. This is how the Lord will do it. He'll we, he will command his angel concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Amen and amen. To guard you in all your ways, 
No disaster will come near your tent, for, he'll, for he will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. They will lift you up. Here's what the angels will do for you. They will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against a stone. You will tread, verse 13, on the lion and the cobra. You will trample the great lion and the serpent. That has to do with, with the devil. Angel will be there to cause you to tread upon the lion and the cobra. That means, you know, whether the devil come to you like a lion, you will tread on that lion. Whether the devil come like a snake, you will tread upon that snake. You will trample the serpent. And the great lion, you will trample the great lion and the simple and the serpent. Amen and amen. Verse 14. And the Lord will explain to you why he will do that for you. Because he loves me. Says the Lord. I will rescue him. I will protect him. And for he acknowledges my name. Guess what? Hopefully you did that. Because this is why I keep telling you, during the Feast of Tabernacle, it is a time to have intimacy with God. When you have intimacy with God, God said, He will rescue you. That means He will save you from whatever problem you have. He will protect you. And He said, what you have to do, you must acknowledge Him. Amen and amen. That means always, you know, give a testimony saying, you know, it's because of my God. I am a, I have this and I have that. In verse 15, he will call on me and I will answer him. The feast of tabernacle, being in the shelter of the Lord, it is the time for you to pray, to call upon God. And come with your list of problems. And the Lord said, I will answer you. You have trouble. God said, I will be with you in that trouble. And I will deliver you. He will deliver you to give you honor. Because one of the promise, you know, when I was doing prophecy for my partner, the Lord said, tell my people that, will, that I will bless them with honor with wealth and with joy this is what the feast of tabernacle is all about god will bless you with honor and then verse 16 will show you another blessing with long life i will satisfy him and show him my salvation it, it, you have when you obey the feast of tabernacle to be blessed with long life because you obey the feast of tabernacle guess what you know you know you know you must be sure of next year you will be alive to worship god once again but the lord said also for me to to have you read Psalm 107 so you may know the feast of tabernacle so called is a time to give thanks and listen to this give thanks to the Lord for he is good and his love endures forever you know this is a time of love and guess what Verse 2 said, let the redeem of the Lord say so. In this translation, you said, let the redeem of the Lord tell their story. Those he redeem from the hand of the foe. From the hand of the devil. Those he gathered from the lands, from the east and west and north and south. When you come to the church, you come in the tabernacle of God. This is a gathering, a gathering season when you come and meet God. And where you are going to lay your burden at his feet. And whatever happens you in that time, you know, 
you you put it at the feet of the Lord. Listen to this. And this is the type of people that will be blessed, you know, because of their prayers. Listen. Some wandered in desert, wasteland, finding no way to a city where they could settle. You know, you could be a person restless. You don't have a place to rest. And, and, and he said, verse 5, they were hungry and thirsty and their lives embedded away. Guess what? Verse 6 said, then they cry out to the Lord in their trouble. Amen. And you, you see what I said, uh, what I read earlier in Psalm 91? You come with your tr trouble and God deliver them from their distress. So, in, during the Feast of Tabernacle, the, a lot of deliverance is going on. Verse 7. He led them by a straight way to a city where they could settle. Like, you have problem. You are not settled. God will give you a place to settle. You could be living right now at somebody's house. But here's another blessing. God will give you your own house. And, and then verse 7. He said, let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For, verse 9, he satisfied the thirsty and filled the hungry with good things. So, there is a scenario that God show you. And the second scenario is in verse 10. He said, Some sit in darkness, in utter darkness, prisoner, suffering in iron chain you know before the feast of tabernacle you could be somebody in bondage you feel like you you are living in darkness in utter darkness you feel like you are in prison but because you obey the feast of tabernacle you obey so God, god will bless you Verse 11, because they rebel against God's command and they ply and despise the plan of the Mosai. So, verse 12, he subjected them to bitter labor, they stumble, and there was no help, no one to help. And then you come to the feast of Tabernacle and you cry. In verse 13, then they cry to the Lord in their trouble and he saved them from their distress. When you obey the Feast of Tabernacle, it is a time when you are going to see yourself delivered and be saved from your distress. And listen to the deliverance scenario. Verse 14, he brought them out of darkness, the utter darkness, and broke away the chains. People that were in bondage, they will, the bondage and the chains will fall off. Because they obey the feast of tabernacle. Verse 15 said, Let them give thanks to the Lord for his unfailing love and his wonderful deeds for mankind. For he breaks down, verse 7, gates of bronze and cut through bars of iron. And, and the third scenario said, the third scenario, we see that in verse 15, some became full through their rebellious way and suffered affliction because of their iniquities. You know, and the Lord said, you know, they suffer affliction because they became fools. They're not wise. You know, they love all food and drew near to the gates of a death. But when you come to the feast of tabernacle, listen to the, uh, uh, the deliverance scenario, then they cry to the Lord in their trouble and save them from their distress. He sent out his word and healed them and rescued them from the grave. You know, if you have somebody sick, you know, tell them next year, take advantage of the feast of tabernacle. You can read Psalm 107 for yourself. You will see all the scenario of deliverance that God will provide for you when you obey the Feast of Tabernacle. 
my brothers and sisters last week i read for you the blessing you know like yesterday the lord pronounced over you on the 21st day of etanim which is the last day of etanim yesterday was october 6 it is a day it was a day of serious blessing when god said in Haggai that he will shake the heavens and the earth to bless you to bless us let me try to get for you the book of Haggai chapter 2 and you can read verse 1 and 9 but what i want you to read the beginning on the 21st day of the seventh month the word of the lord came to the prophet a guy let me put that scripture here for you came to the prophet a guy and where he said that he will shake the heavens and the earth yesterday was a day of covenant verse 5 said this is what i come i covenanted with you when you came out of egypt that's in the land of bondage and he said my spirit remain among you do not fear you know when you obey the feast of tabernacle your fear will be away it will be cast away and and the lord promised in a little while I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. God will shake everything for you to bless you during the Feast of Tabernacle. And this is the nice part I like. I will shake the I will shake all nations. Verse 7. And what is desires? what is desired by all nations will come you know during the feast of tabernacle it is a time to present to god what you des desire from the nation where you live today is not too late to say to god what you desire from the united states if you live in the united states whatever country you live you are living right now and he said what is desired by all nations will come and i will fill this house not only the physical house of the lord but you as the house of the lord as the temple of god he said i will fill this house with glory amen and amen god is talking about riches when you obey the feast of tabernacle he will enrich you he will give you his wealth he said the silver is mine and the gold is mine so if it's for money you know your lack the fear of lack of your lack you will be taken away you will from this day forward see in abundance come to you and this is why he will do it he said the glory of this present house will be greater than the glory of the former house that means you will have more blessing this year than you have last year because the house of the lord as the temple of the lord amen and amen and he said and in this place i will grant peace that means not only the house of the lord will be a place of peace but you as the house of the lord you will have peace so guess what today the lord say to me to conclude with this word receive his peace receive his shalom he shall bless you until you meet him again next year with you know with the peace of god you will have the peace of god carry you throughout uh, the the year until you meet him again because you shall be satisfied in everything that you do in everything that you put your hands to and then the lord said to me for you to read the blessings in deuteronomy 28 and all these blessings are yours for you to receive in this season. I say these things in Jesus' name. 
Amen.